Hello, Lulu. Guess who's coming to dinner? Well, good evening. Guess who's coming to dinner? We got folks here today for you, Louisville, and everybody else around the country who's tuned in. We've got dinner guests with no dinner, but our dinner is conversation, entertainment, activism, you name it, we've got it. And uh, at first, I want to introduce to you, we have this evening, the Mighty Shades of Ebony, and first, I'm going to bring into the set the director, Mr. Chris Rashid. What's happening, Mr. Rashid? Hey, hey, how you doing, Miss Janice? I, hey, look, I am blessed. I am so thrilled about having the group Mighty Shades of Ebony. I mean, all that energy, all that intelligence, all that intellect just knocked my socks off when I saw you all on uh Senator Neal's show. I told him, I said, I don't care what you say. I'm stealing. They got to come <laughs> on my show. You know, well, so. Thank you. Um, thank you for having us. You know, I'm really excited about that. I wanted to tell the community how you started this program. Okay. Well, first of all, I am a graduate of Kentucky State University. Oh, you're a therapist too? Yes. And I was in the drum line and the band, Thunder and Thoroughbred Express. Go ahead. Often imitated, but never duplicated. Get down, get down. <laughs> there are friends so, in the house. Yeah, so, you know, uh, but really I started off just as a musician uh, growing up on Al Jarreau, Earth, Wind & Fire. Yes, sir. Um, you know, just you name it. Um, and so it just influenced me. So I'm an artist at heart. And when I got into education, I realized in 2003, I was teaching language arts and the mm -hmm. students not relating at all. It wasn't my generation where they wrote it on the chalkboard and we just right. looked out the textbook. It was a whole new world. And it was uh, on a computer? It wasn't even on that. At that point, we were doing uh, transparencies and white. Oh, yeah, with the, with the, with the little the dry little. erase marker and the whiteboard <laughs> and the transparency. <laughs> now we're doing all this, you know, smart board technology. But they just weren't into it. They didn't like the writing, the reading. I didn't, you know, as a, a brand new teacher, you just get what they give you. So the whitewashed type of uh, materials that they do. So I started uh, doing a music journal. Okay. You like African Bambata and, the, and uh, the message. And we would like, do you like this song or do you not like this song? And mm -hmm. for it, give examples. And it, then it grew one day. The last day of school, I noticed these kids were rapping, doing a rap battle on the last day of school. So then I said, okay, the next year I'm going to include, you know, hip hop, like rapping to see who okay. can. And as time went on, I just started um, writing uh, like the vocabulary, writing the hip hop, you know, uh, um, you know, compare is, is, is the same and contrast is the differences. Don't get it twisted with that word called inference, word of inference. When I infer using reasoning based on evidence to conclude what occurred. So, oh, you know. oh, watch it. <laughs> Look, so you were writing hip hop code. Yeah. So, I, I, <laughs> I, I, you know, contrary to what some would have you believe, I am uh, taken from one of my heroes, uh, James Brown. I am the godfather of hip hop education in Kentucky. Go ahead. Go ahead. Three, claim, when they were claim your title. Yeah. <laughs> And then I, got the, I got the one week suspension without pay to prove it. <laughs> That's <laughs> and now it's, Yeah. And now it's a thing, you know, now it's a thing. So yeah. a lot of great teachers out here, this, the hip hop in the curriculum in math, science, social studies, language arts. And, and uh, then one day I was bringing in a lot of community members and it was kind of like a, a secret. I did, a, a, I was a founding um, a teacher and, and, Ventral coordinator at a program called Street Academy. Okay. Millen and uh, Bernard Menace and Reverend Lewis Coleman. Recruit oh, oh, you had some old schoolers. I sat at the feet of the masters. They broke. Yes, sir, you did. Uh, we would, and so I, we, I learned the thing about um, in the community, getting the kids, teaching them things, how to call and response and memorize quotes and then go out in the community, perform them and go out. And so I kind of got that concept going, but it wasn't until 
by luck, someone, uh, this gentleman named Sheldon McElroy asked me to stand in for him for a spoken word. It was a, a, a smoke town poetry walk okay. around historic places in smoke town and talk about it. And then, um, and then they would, uh, like a poet would jump out right, and drop a poem. So I, I, not, I just did mine in the form. It just so happened Mazik, where I worked at the time, Mazik Middle School. So I broke it down about Albert Mazik, you know, uh, that came out of Canada, the family, the activists came to Louisville, you know, and all that. And then I broke out the rap about Mazik and, and part of the rap that I showed you. And uh, right. so then Hannah Drake approached me. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Class, and she wanted me to write this song. And uh, she said, you know, I, I see you as a, this is true. She, I was, I was floored, but she said, as one of my contemporaries, your skill set, I want you to write this song and blend these themes uh, uh, between Martin Luther King's assassination during the sanitation strike and an anti ring message. Right. right. And I said, okay. And she said, I want you to go perform it. And I'm like, well, my kid, by this time, all my kids could rap, all my classroom, right. my daughters could rap. So I said, I'm just going to put some kids with my daughter, teach them the song. And I'll write it, but I'll kind of co-write with them. Right. And then we went out in the community and then people noticed. And that was five years ago. And now and it's just now national. It's history. So check yeah. this out. Two things. You said Mazik. Now I used yes. to substitute teach at Mazik. I don't know if you ever remember seeing me or not. That was one of the only schools that I wanted to go to. I picked three schools that I'd go to. Uh, from like uh, 2014 to 2018. Okay. I used to go to Mazik on a regular basis. Um, the other thing is remember when the first hip hop song came out? Hip hop, hip hop, hip hop, hip hop, the hopper, you don't stop. Hotel, motel. I heard my eight year old nephew, and I'm saying if they can remember that. Can they remember other uh, studies through that through that modem of, of teaching? And so you've kind of done what I was thinking about at that time. I'm seeing something on his white. I don't like that. But look, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do right now. We're going to bring some of the students in and the production manager. First, we're going to bring in Miss Cam. Hello, Miss Cam. How are you this evening? I'm doing wonderfully. Thank you for having us. All right. Well, thank you for being here. And then we've got, am I saying it correct? Jayus? Hello? I can't hear you, baby. You're, you're on mute. mute. You're on mute, sweetheart. Yeah, you're on. Bottom left-hand corner, you're on mute. There ah. we go. Hey, Miss Jayus. Aren't you you're supposed to be excited to be on here? She said, hello. How you hey. doing, sweetie? I'm you doing good? good. How are you? I'm just wonderful. I'm excited. Can't you tell? And Miss Maya. Okay, this is our production Hello. manager. I'm excited to be here. Hi, Janet. Are you excited? I'm Good. excited. Good. <laughs> this is a this is the first time that I have had more than two guests on with me at the same time. So, you know, when you're doing this new uh streaming thing, you have to be videographer and uh I have to check on my comments over here. I'm not dealing with the comments. They can come up. They'll be on the screen for later because this is live and you'll be, I'll, re, I'll restream it so you can all, you all can see it again yourselves. Okay. So tell me something, Miss Cam. I mean, Cam, tell me how you got into this. What made you want to be a part of it? Well, I've been rapping for a long time since I was three. Well, maybe not that long in the grand scheme of things <laughs> okay. since I was three. So about 14 years I've been rapping. I don't know. I just activism has always been a big part of my life. I love social justice, environmental justice. It just sort of came into a culmination where I realized we realized that we can use our talents and our right. passions and use them together into this product. It's easily digestible and it's fun. Wow, you found a safe place to land, huh? Oh, I think I'm having technical issues. One second. I still heard you. And and Jayus, tell us, tell tell me how you got involved. You two are sisters, right? Siblings, yes. Yeah, we're siblings, siblings, okay. Yes. All right. Um, 
Jay, let's move over into the screen just a little bit more. You remind me, you have a you have a very Sade look about yourself. Did anybody ever tell you that? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> okay. So how did you get involved? You just kind of followed your sibling? Well, yes, kind of. Yes. Um, <laughs> okay. I I got involved when there was like there was other members, and then and then there was like I kind of like an open like an open spot, and I was like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. You you can I fit really, that. You could take that place, huh? Yes. And I really I really love doing it. Okay. Yeah. And you all all write your own material, correct? correct. Yes. Okay, Miss Maya. Tell me about you. How 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 do you make help make all of this work? <laughs> well, I first got started with this. Um, I lead this thing called Youth Voices Kentucky, and I get to interview different student groups and activists. And I was first introduced to this group when I interviewed them about um, the work that they were doing surrounding music and activism. And then slowly I became more and more involved. Um, I mean, this is a very special group, like Cam was saying, like activism, politics, education, they're not separate things. And that really spoke to me. Um, so Mr. Rashid pulled me in here. And um, right now we're just working on a lot of initiatives and getting started and fighting for food justice and environmental justice and educating people through music. Um, I don't participate in the music part, but I help with the presentation style. Okay. All right. Well, that's, you know, are you a college student? Are you a teacher? No. You look I, so young. <laughs> I am currently um, a senior attending South Oldham High School. I'll be going to college next year. Okay. All right. Well, it's it's wonderful how how the youth have picked up the 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 baton and are moving forward. Uh, so, um, Chris, why don't you? I was very um, impressed by the the video, the performance that you all did that had to do with redlining, because for for youth to know what redlining is is real important because that has a lot to do with why our politics are so fragmented um, and why our voting uh, status is is being oppressed because of redlining you know so this is where we are today so Chris you want to uh, bring that piece into focus and and I'll put it on uh, the screen. Sure, I'll go ahead and uh, you per, you want me to show the red line video? Is that what you're saying? Yes. yes. Okay, I'll go ahead and show that. Here we go. Reduced to dimes, they segregated our people, yeah, poverty leads to crime. Red lines, but dollars reduced to dimes, they segregated our people, yeah, poverty leads to crime. If you buck and you want a new house, you loan, deny. If you buck and you want a new house, that is a plan to deprive. Your income becomes a not factor, have it, have not. A sinister plot, they do anything for power. Anything. They do anything for power. Anything. They do anything for power. Anything. They do anything for power. They do anything for power. They do anything for power. Red line is a sinister plan. Who is an invisible man? Fight back, Ralph Ellison. Ha, yes, you can. Oongawa. Oongawa. Ignite your black dollars. Ignite your black power. I was reading NATO, somebody Richard Wright, and it occurred to me. Lack of opportunity and hope leads to tragedy. Teach a man to fish. He will eat on that forever. Pacify his skills, he will always be indebted. Limit all his choices and back him in a corner. Black frying pan crashing down, now you a goner. 
They kill our people, but they say we a killer. They got more moves than Michael Jackson thriller. One thing I know is something gotta change, or else one day I'm a go gorilla. They do anything for power. 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 Some people say don't speak on red. Some people say watch your mouth. We know that those people are mouth. We speak. Er, Oscar the Grouch. Line. But dollars are reduced to dimes. They say I could get it up, peak, but yeah, poverty leads to crime. No more separate, but no more crushing up peak. Putting in line and making it change. It's time to adjust. We're changing the game. We won't stand for the okie doke little bit. No more happy with the Mr. T. Start to keep time organized for your mind. Open up your seeking device to create a new movement. Old Red Line, Fair Housing Act. 50 years later, new Red Line. Many hated facts. Old Red Line, Fair Housing Act. Years later, new red line, many hated facts. Next conversation, new generation, gentrification, more degradation. Education leads to power, education leads to power, education leads to power, education leads to power. We need to use our power, we need to use our power, we need to use our power, we need to use our power. In the United States and Canada, redlining is a systematic denial of various services such as home loans for residents of black and brown demographics. These loans are denied regardless of income. It is factually proven that across our country, whites and blacks that have the same income are approved or denied according to their skin color. No ability to accumulate generational wealth leaves can dream deferred, as Langston Hughes. Mm. Say that. <laughs> Say that. Okay, I gotta get everybody back. Let me do this over here. Boom. Everybody's back. I did it, I did it, I did it. I get excited because this is my first time doing all of this. Wow, that was powerful. Man, that was powerful. You know, a whole lot of grown folks don't know what redlining is. They don't know what gentrification is. You know what I'm saying? So you're carrying a message, not just for your age group, your peers, but you're carrying a very strong message just for our community. That's 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 dope. That's how I'd have to say it myself. That's dope. You know, she's left me. She's saying, what does she know about that? Look, I've been here a long time, a really long time. So, so all of you got together. Uh, I know the, there are two young ladies in the video that are not here today. But you all just put all that together with your help, Chris. Uh, it was um, it's, that's a culmination of uh, that we have about nine songs, and okay. so um, it's a it's like we met every uh, Sunday prior to the pandemic. Okay. And actually, I used to have a lot of guys. Um, that were in it most of guy heavy. Mm -hmm. And then as, as people dropped out, the group has had maybe 20 performers, like in Rotary. Okay. And as people had other interests or other opportunities, that's how uh, Jay is snuck in. When she was okay. saying, eight years old, watched, she watched them for a whole year. So she, she knew all the songs. So when this one person uh, uh, quit to play baseball, mm -hmm. she was like, "I let me let me do it. So, uh, but it get, it just got to the point where, um, it just got to the point where I was like learning how to like teach them through iambic pentameter or freestyle. And so we started, we would meet every Sunday. So the parents mm -hmm. were part of the commitment too, okay. because them being girls, when it was boys, I was running myself ragged driving. I had a whole SUV full of knuckleheads. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> youngins. And we're riding all over. But when it was girls, I was like, I taught at Western Middle School for the Arts uh, three uh, three years ago. With, with Miss Rice. With Miss Rice, Miss Foster. Uh, and, uh, and and so I was like, I need new members. I only have two members. And uh, we had an offer to do a, we were 
like gigs lined up for NPR and and our WFPL radio. Hey, lovely. Hey, love. love. <laughs> <laughs> we got so, another okay. member in the house. All right. Um, she, she, she's the one that said, oh, Oscar the Grouch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, no, but what we would do is we would meet and every Sunday for three hours, I mean, committed. Wow. Wow, and, that's commitment. And so Alicia and Love's background, they were just little sixth graders. Like, and I needed, I didn't think all girls or anything like that. I just noticed Love. Check yourself. Be careful. Come on. Be careful. Well, I, no, I never thought about it because I had mixed groups. <laughs> I like to like have boy, boys and girls normally. Okay. So I really thought about it. It was just happened. I was like, this particular class, I swear it was 90% divas. The whole class, they were all awesome in their own oh, way. Okay. But they wasn't taking no mess. They yeah. wasn't taking no mess off anybody. And love, it was like the first day of school. Love, 11 years old, in this room full of divas that take no prisoners, went to sit down and fell on the floor. Everybody laughed at her. Hold love, up. Let me let Love tell that story. What happened, Love? Well, as I remember it, everyone started laughing at me. And you might think that a little 11-year-old would be like, oh, I hope they feel all right. Or, oh, no, don't cry, little child. But <laughs> I um, I actually stood up and also laughed with them. And then I bowed because it's like a little show. I'm a you little had, comedian. You had everybody's attention. Yeah. When I saw that. Yeah. I didn't know if she could I didn't know if love could sing, rap, act. I know that she was talented because Western Middle School for the Arts is like right. a baby Y pass. Right. I didn't care. What I saw was I already knew like that right there is special. So I was like, hey, I said I, I made a mental note because I, I used the group to teach in class. I showed them the videos and teach topics, my classes off the, their videos. So I wanted her to first see it before I invited her to the group. And then the other member who had a prior commitment, Alicia, the one that said education leads to power. Right. Um, she, she, she's, a, they all can sing and everything. Alicia though, sings like really big, like Patti LaBelle. Yeah, and, I um, heard her sing uh, yeah. last Saturday. So I, that's what I noticed because I had a community time. I would just let them just do their, do them. I didn't make them do like little activities or whatever. I just said for the 25 minutes of your community time, just do you. I'm going to okay. sit back and watch. And these girls were having an Alicia Keys battle, not a rap battle, an Alicia Keys battle. And they were what? singing back Alicia Keys verses against each other. And I heard this voice coming out. It was, it was like a, it looked like a rap cypher, but it was a singing cypher. And I heard this <laughs> powerful bellowing voice coming out. And I said, OK, that's it. So I recruited them and I told the moms, I said, but I, I can't drive them around because I don't, you know, the, the girls, I don't, you know, I'm a man. I, I need your support on that. Are you willing to do that? They were like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And these are drama majors. So they're used to taking their kids and investing in their kids right. and taking them places. So right. they would come over for an hour for the first hour. First, I had to teach Love and Alicia how to rap. But as you can see, they picked it up. They caught on. <laughs> and okay. so, but then, so once we got rolling, the first hour, I, I get out of the way. I just send them upstairs and they go through all the songs. They work on choreography and they laugh and they bond. Then they come down and then they have to perform all the songs, like nine songs in front of me. Okay. The real deal. Okay. And I let me let me do this. Let me ask you, Jay. So after how long have you been in the group now? I don't really know. Time goes by super fast. So I guess I'd okay. say. Um, Maybe three years. You were eight then. How old four. are you now? Uh, I'm 12 now, but I'm going to okay. be 13. So four. four. Four sounds like going on five, huh? It's, it's been four years. Okay. She, joined, four. she joined. She watched when she was eight. And then when she was nine, she joined the group. Yeah. Okay. So and your and and everybody's parents. It's wonderful that your parents are supportive, because see that's what we need. We need those parents. I I just you know I have to, I have to elude to the fact and time when I was <clears throat> young, and I am, so I can tell you all just a smidgen about me. 
I'm a jazz singer. And, uh, but I was an athlete and I was a cheerleader. And my mother's uh, friends used to say, well, do you just let Janice do whatever she wants to do? And my mother was like, pretty much if she thinks that she can do it, you know, so she never told me no. And I love that because today my mom made me who I am. You know, she made me the woman. She made me strong. I was I was a 80 pounds soaking wet, but I didn't take no stuff from nobody about nothing ever. You know, I had more letters and sweaters than any of the boy athletes, but I had real skinny legs. <laughs> and they, they used to just really get me on that one. But, you know, my my success in sports made them shut up. You know what I'm saying? But it's like what you do, like you were talking, Chris, about that you usually had boys and to have, you know, this last decade has kind of been the decade of uh, femininity, of women coming to power and, and taking our place, you know, uh, not, I mean, our place was always there. We just had to take it and own it. What do you think about that, love? You think we own in our place now? I believe we are. Oh, well, what I see and what you see. <laughs> so, Cam, tell me how you how you look at where our city is. This is I'm gonna take you. I'm gonna flip this script. Where do you think our city is right now? We've got a new police chief, and uh, you've got one. You've got the video on policing, uh, Chris. You want to get that together? Yes, we uh, we have the video queued up called "No Justice, No Peace" about police brutality. Yes, okay. and it's breaking down the slave mentality too. So, Cam, how do you, how are we, are we moving in the right direction? Do you see that that we we're coming up with some solutions? Are are some of the things that you all are saying? Is that the solution? Are those the solutions? Because I believe they sound pretty good to me. <laughs> <laughs> I believe we've been walking in the wrong direction for so long, but we finally turned around and we're starting we're starting to go to where we need to be. Okay. This is a long trek of progress, innovation, right. and activism. Yeah. And we can't slow down. We can't get complacent. No. And like, of course, it's great to celebrate that we have all of these new things, the new police chief, the change in presidency. Those are great things, but it's not the solution. It's yeah. not the end of the problem and it's not the answer. Well, it's we're we're on a marathon. This is not a sprint. This is exactly this is our life. So it's a marathon. However long it takes to get to the point where we have justice and we have peace. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I think about the 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 word that uh, Miss uh, Amanda Gorman how she used uh, just just us and justice uh, a quiet. You know, it doesn't mean peace. You know that 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 there's. You want to say something, Miss Love? Oh no, I was just really agreeing with you. Yeah, she's she she. With that part in the speech was like profound. You know, mm -hmm. um, and her her whole speech was profound. So that's why I was really excited, cause uh, you all are next. You know what I'm saying? You you're next. So you you're preparing yourself. I told uh, I told Chris I teach artist development. I I teach stage presence and performance. Uh, lived in Las Vegas, lived in Paris, France. Sang on real big stages. I did some, I did a few things in my times, but you know. But uh, I I'd like to be here for you if you ever wanna when you wanna do some things and you maybe wanna take it maybe to another level. Holla at your girl. You know let's what I'm go. saying? <laughs> All right, Chris. Let's let's do the uh, the protest, the justice piece. Okay, right away. I'm working this this video thing here. According to the Washington Post, black men and women 
are being killed at a rate that is 2.5 times higher than whites in our country. 34% of unarmed people killed in the U.S. are black males, which is quite disproportionate. Black men make up only 6% of U.S. population. America, we need to talk. It's time we get the real conversation started. Our society is what really killed Trayvon Martin. For me, it's not hard to see. Look way back to slavery. If a black man speaks his mind, hang that black man from a tree. What is that strange fruit hanging low from a tree? Read the willy lips and yeah, okay. to the states to teach slave owners how to rob their sins to make it weak. In other words, emasculate, manipulate, and castrate. Then you crush his wealth, break him down from head to feet. It's a black man rush of freedom. Nose, make him only care about shoes, cars, and clothes. Condition him to love, light skin, and how to hate himself. If you catch him reading books, take his life, they must lay close. Education is the key to power for itself. If he is not educated, then you just think all is well. If there's no justice, then there can't be peace. If there's no justice, then there can't be peace. Now we're in modern days, presidential KKK. We need relief from this pain in a major way. Black men and women getting killed with impunity. No charges about murder immunity, they killed Alton Sterling for selling CDs. Tanisha Anderson got one police custody. How did she die this under head on the concrete? Michael Brown, Joe Crawford, he's a four. Delta Parker, Philip White, Tamir West. What is the worth of a black life? Black lives matter. The killing must cease. If there's no justice, then there can't be peace. peace. Yes. If there's no justice, then there can't be peace. If police brutality, why your faces matter? Colin Kaepernick took a knee? Is this mm. Colin Kaepernick took a knee? If there's no justice, then there can't be peace. If there's no justice, then there can't be peace. The murder of our people by police must cease. The murder of our people by police must cease. In other words, is our people won't bend. We'll never look the other way and just pretend. Mr. Officer, Mr. Officer, why you want to put me in a coffin, sir? I'm a young black girl trying to make it in the world. I just want to live my life. Mr. Officer, Mr. Officer, why you want to put me in a coffin, sir? I'm a young black girl trying to make it in the world. Speaking truth to power through my life. Mr. Officer, Mr. Officer, why you want to put me in a coffin, sir? I'm a young black girl with dreams that one day I will be the president. Mr. Officer, Mr. Officer, why do you want to put me in a coffin, sir? I'm just a rose that grew up from the concrete and I'm attracted to the light. To the light, to the light. One day I'm gonna touch the sky. I'm gonna touch the sky. I'm gonna, I'm gonna touch the sky. I'm gonna, I'm gonna touch the sky. And police brutality now. Huh. Huh. All right, let me bring you back in, love. I see you. You moved. I got you back. Wow, how strong is that? That is really strong. I mean, so let me ask you this. You know, a lot of this came to the forefront. I have a beef about the the non-recognition of Colin Kaepernick. I'm a Colin Kaepernick fan. So the fact that now that everybody's on board, uh, corporate America, you know, and, and everybody is making donations to, you know, making sure that there's justice and equality and equity, you know. So what do you think about what should happen with him? Because I think he has, he kind of was, you know, when you, when you light a match and, and, and light the fuse and then it blows up. 
okay? But, but they forgot the fizzle, you know, the 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 cord on the on the bomb was was just a silent kneel. What do you think about that? How do you how do you look at his role in all of this? Anybody? I'll go I'll go first on this. Okay. Um we knew it was important to reference him in this song because he was very influential in what he did, his silent protest. And even back then, right. people thought it was inappropriate. They said this is not how you protest. Mm -hmm. And it's peaceful, it's silent, it's not hurting anyone. So what's the issue? Right. It's like there's never, ever, ever going to be a right way to protest. Never. Exactly. Never. There's never gonna be a right way. And he did what he had to do. He stood up, he stood up for his rights and at the risk uh, of his own, at the risk of his own career, he spoke exactly. out against what was wrong. Right, right. And you know, that takes courage, you know, and sometimes it's just one person's act of courage to make change. You know, that one act of courage that he did, I think, um, was a piece of it. The the eight minutes of 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 the death of George Floyd was devastating to me. I said, and that's one reason that the country came together because it's not somebody telling somebody what happened. Everybody got to see it. Yeah. And you know, and when you're a, a certain group of people and you're living it, it makes it, it makes it difficult. But now that it brought everybody else in, it brought all races in, Latinos, whites, Maya, uh, so you know that it was, the civil rights movement had a life as long as it did because it also brought whites into the forefront. And most of the whites were movie stars. You know, um, Paul Newman, Marlon Brando, you know, along with Harry Belafonte, you know, along with Mahalia Jackson. And one of my, one of my mentors, uh, Josephine Baker, have you know any of you know about Joseph who Josephine Baker is? Josephine Baker was an international star, but she became famous in Paris. Okay. But she also um when in World War II, she was a part of the resistance and she carried messages to the uh American soldiers and the French soldiers written in invisible ink on the back of her music. So when she died, she got full honors like a soldier. She's buried in Paris, France with full honors. So these are people that were a part, were marching with King. You know what I'm saying? So we, it's just, it's a new era. It's a new, uh, the millennials, uh, the millennial look was, you know, they ain't taking it, ain't happening. This is it. We get, this is, like you said, turn this around. Turn this bus around. It's going the wrong way. You know, because we have to step up and, and take ownership of what has an effect on our lives. And that has to do with the voting and the gentrification and the redlining and the uh, justice system. The other, uh, the other piece that you did. Um, Janice, if you don't mind, I wanted to point something. I wanted them to share if you uh, their experience okay. when they, no justice, no peace. Okay. Um, those signs, like for example, uh, can you all uh, share the members share your experience, and then also the racism that you experienced while you were shooting that video over in Indiana. <laughs> oh, you they know, were in um, Indiana. Yeah. Part of <laughs> one of the. One of it was, but I was wondering if uh, Love or, or Jayus, would you perhaps like to share on 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 the process of, of making the signs, the artwork, the whole thing? Oh. Jayus, do you want to share first? Yes. Okay, go, go on. on. What'd you say? Go on. Go ahead. The floor ahead, is Jayus. yours, baby. Okay. Um, while while we were shooting in the midst of shooting the video, we were like out on this um this like beachy kind of area, and we were shooting the video there. And the uh, I think it was the Indiana State Troopers. They were kind of just like hovering and watching watching us on like this little building thing. 
Mm-hmm. And we, we found we later found out that some people went and reported reported us because they did not like the message that we were sharing and saying. Mm-hmm. And and when when the parents when the parents was up there, I think like kind of like a like a, a spy, I guess. And and she was like listening in to all like the, the rude things they were saying. So when you found out about that, how did that affect you? I didn't I, when I found out about it, I was like, this, I was like, I didn't, this can't be real. It's, I, it was unbelievable to me because mm-hmm. I didn't think this would happen. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow. I was, yeah. I was speechless kind of yeah. like that. Yeah. Love? It made me feel like kind of angry a little bit and also pretty sad for the world because if there are still people acting like that, then how can we make a change? Yeah. You know, you have to change people's hearts in order to change their minds. I I wanted to point out too that these are visual artists. They can write plays, they write the dialogue, they dance, they sing, they rap. They also are scholars. They They do public speaking and they design Google slide presentations and then they teach others how to do that. And, and I'll let them, if we have time, they can tell you about their experience with Backpack Summer League, uh, mm-hmm. entry kids they're working with, but those actual protest signs that you saw uh, right. in the video, they they designed all those signs themselves. Okay, well, you know, this is this is creativity at its, at its epitome, at its height. Just like I said, you all are next. So get ready, cause you're next. You know, it's, your turn is coming and you are preparing. Now, um, Chris, how about the food desert piece? You know, okay. is, go on. Speaking of which, uh, when I was talking about them designing uh, Google slide presentations, mm-hmm. so look at, at an artifact uh, to illustrate that point. I'm going to show it for us right now. Tomatoes, cabbage, 
you please give us the nutrients that we need? The bottom of the roots, the love of the fruit, the best of the nature. That is the truth. My mom and my dad plant the seed to eat healthy food properly. You are what you eat from your head to your feet. If you were trapped, you cannot compete. If you are poor, you cannot afford organically grown vegetables. What does it mean to eat cage free? How can you know if you cannot see? The blueprint is written, it's already set. Low expectations are already met. Break free from the cage, they are testing it net. You know that the sea is always a threat. Proper nutrition impacts the brain, emotional balance, and all of those things. How fries Cheetos back for the mind? I feel the carrots, the roast is sublime. So many people have diabetes. Eat fried fresh, what is the meaning? Please limit the bread. Please keep these words in your head. If we want our words to be said, go take a walk and get out of bed. You only live once in this physical form. This is a love song, and this is not a scorn. Open up your mind and take a chance. This is our PSA. We thank you in advance. We are Mighty Shades of Ebony, and this is Food Justice. Food Deserts in our neighborhood, we need to bum rush this. Always read the label, you should know you can't trust this. We're serving organic drinks and juice because crush this. Junk food in our hood, you know this is a crime. We need to take a stand, and that's the bottom line. All right. Wow. Strong, powerful. Let me ask you something, Maya. How do you feel about being a part of of this this creation? Because this Mighty Shades of Ebony is a creation. It's a collaborative. And how, how do you feel that your participation in it is making a difference? Well, first of all, I feel very honored to be a part of this group because obviously they've done so much work um, before me. So before I came on, you know, they have this great record. Um, I think it's important to be a part of this group because I think, you know, the message of 2020 is ultimately that we need solidarity, right? right. Um, in everything, we need it. In our policies, we need it. Um, in creating solutions for environmental justice, you know, for racial justice, criminal justice, educational justice. So... Um, I think by being part of this group um, and engaging in the civil discourse with these young scholars, it's allowing me to have, you know, a broader perspective on all these issues and it's allowing me to also advocate. Um, and Janice, also back to one of your points from earlier, you were saying that, you know, like 2020, we've been able to see everything that's happened. And I think um, 2020 was such an awful year, but it was a year of full vision. And I think we can honestly use this to our advantage. Like you were saying, everyone was able to see the video of George Floyd. Um, so I think now it's just about all of us coming together and stepping up. So that's why I'm honored to be a part of this group. And you know, that also has uh, a lot to do with what we're actually going through today. It's about truth. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there are not two different versions of truth. There's only truth. You know, everybody sees the same thing that's like the glass half empty the glass half full you know and it's people's perspective but the truth is what it is it's the truth and we cannot we cannot differentiate or move away from what is true and what is visible to to the human eye and and discerning that because you are of some other elk that you see, see things differently, but you've seen the same thing, but you have to decipher what is the truth. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're dealing with in our, in, our, in our press and in our politics and in our policies and in our relationship with one another. I'm going to kind of bring this uh, to, to an end here, but I want, I hope that my audience is really, really, appreciate it what you all do and chris uh, kudos to you my brother you know uh king of hip-hop in kentucky <laughs> you know godfather you got that. Of hip <laughs> godfather of hip-hop excuse me Ma. you know um, and 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 ladies students girls look you are all that and all them chips that you don't need to eat <laughs> you know what i'm saying uh, you just you just make me very proud because a lot of times there are, there's times that they don't they don't highlight the good. You know, we're doing a lot of good things. Our youth are doing a lot of good things and growing 
and excelling because you are you're going to be the leaders of tomorrow and you have to take your place you know sometimes uh you don't you're you're somebody might volunteer you you may not volunteer yourself but sometimes it's a role you might have to step in because that's what will make the difference that what's that's what will make change don't you agree cam absolutely <laughs> yeah you have to you you got to play your part everyone has a part to play okay and and no one should be silenced everyone should be heard and that's one of the things about the show guess who's coming to dinner i know i don't know if some of you understand why i named the show guess who's coming to dinner but there was you know about the movie Sydney there was a movie called guess who's coming to dinner Sydney Poitier, right? Sydney Poitier was in love with a white woman and she wanted to marry him she took him home to her parents unbeknownst to them okay so they had to deal with some of their hesitancy about race and culture it was the unspoken word but now we're living in a in a day and time that that the voices need to be heard your voices need to be heard they are so motivating and inspirational I applaud you. Boop, boop. You know, do your thing. Don't stop. Chris, if you ever need me or the girls want to, I'd, I'd love to come to a rehearsal. When when that time comes that we can kind of do that, you know, y'all can call me up and invite me. I, I'll show up. I promise I will. Well, you know, we meet every Sunday. <laughs> this is the Mighty Shades. Can you hear me? Yes. Mighty Shades of Ebony is a group of 20 students from seven different schools. Um, mostly middle schools, but Maya mm -hmm. Elder uh, High School and Cam is an engineering school of engineering student at U of L. Okay, seventeen year old, and um, but we meet every Sunday at three o'clock. So we would love to have you as a guest uh, to uh, meet our young leaders, and uh, those twenty individuals could definitely benefit from your wisdom and your and your skills. So you do this virtually. Yes, we do this virtually every, we have an initiatives we're working on. We're building a youth-led community center. Okay. Uh, partnering with different agencies where we have a campaign called Turn the Red Line Green. We have an initiative called Tricked Out Trash Cans. And we also- Oh yeah, that was good too. And we are also uh, actually have organic food that we're putting into uh, families' households. Um, so we're signing up parents and families for shares. $12 for uh, two weeks worth of groceries, organic vegetables. So Do you have a website? We uh, we don't have a website. What we do have is we have a, a Instagram at Mighty Shades of Ebony, at Mighty Shades of Ebony. And um, and then we also have Shades.Ebony is our uh, email address. Um, okay. Our address, Shades. You don't, you don't have a Facebook page? We don't have a Facebook. That's why we brought Maya in. So Maya okay. expert at at production. She uh, Maya already has a Instagram show with and that she produces. Like okay, you know. So we're bringing in Maya to help us to develop a, a web page and um, a business model plan. And actually, is going to run our production company. Okay, because people you know, they might want you all to perform. I mean, it, it's time you're getting ready. Your engagement book is getting ready to be filled to the, to the rim. I'm going to tell you about it. You know, oh, however it is, if it's on, on zoom or stream yard or whatever it is, people want to, they will want to give you exposure. You deserve exposure. So like Thank I told you. you, get ready. Cause it's, it's your turn. Thank you so much. Ladies. I appreciate that. Chris, I applaud you. Thank you for coming to dinner. And it's dinner time somewhere, so bon appetit. Uh, I'll, I'll see you all next time. Take care. Bye. It was fun. Thanks Bye. for coming. Thanks for having us. Take care Bye. of yourselves. Okay. Call me. Holla. <laughs> all right. Wow. Now, what you got to say about that? They were all there. How how inspirational. You know, I, I say they're right behind Miss uh, Amanda Gorman. They're next.
They're next. They're actually now, you know, they're all of that. Everybody just does. The masses just don't know, you know, but right here in Louisville, we have to support them. We have to support uh, Chris uh, for his work that he's doing with these youth. And, and that's just a part of them. That's not all of them. And they're, they're busy. They're busy doing things to make a difference in our community. So I take my hats off to them, my hat off to them. And um, I want to tell everyone, I hope you enjoyed it. You know, that's um, that was just uh, full of energy for me. You know, I'm a little high energy, a little hyped anyway. But um, I enjoyed that. And this is, today is Friday. So Monday, uh, we are going to have Dr. James Zetta Ferguson. She's the um, the owner of the new complex that's built down on 12th and Jefferson. Um, we're going to talk about that facility and what it's going to be doing for the community and about some of the businesses that have moved in and, and taken ownership of helping to make a change in the Russell neighborhood. Um, so don't miss that. And next Friday, we have, uh, next Friday, let me remember who we have. Uh, we have, um, I can't think of who it is right now. I know we've got representative, state representative Attica Scott's coming. Attica was out front on the front line. She's got some stories to tell us. She's got some things that are going on legislatively that we need to know about. Attica's going to let us know what's going on. Um, and I've got another guest already slated, and um, I, it's just running past me. But I'll tell you who it is on Monday. But um, just to stay in tune. You need to follow us. You need to like us on uh, YouTube. You need to subscribe. You know, there's a little red button. It says subscribe, you know, because I need to build numbers. I need to know you're watching. I need to know you're out there. Uh, I appreciate the comments that came in today, Miss Faye and Cousin Debbie. I hope you feel better, baby. You know, my cousin is having a little bout with COVID, and uh, we're praying for her. You know, it's it's no joke. And I want to say to all the senior citizens, uh, don't think twice about taking this shot. I mean, I know you you some may be hesitant, but you've got a choice. you got a 50-50 chance of not getting it. If you have the vaccine, you have a 100% chance of getting it. And no one knows how they can fight it, how their body will react to it. You know, so nobody wants to be taken out by COVID. That's, you know, especially if there's a way that you can protect yourself. We want you to protect yourself. I want you to protect yourself. I'm protecting myself. My husband's protecting himself. You know, things will open up when once everyone does what they need to do. And in our community, we have a problem with people being hesitant, waiting to see what's going to happen. Don't wait and see. You know, you have to take a leap of faith. I'd rather know that I'm protected. And I haven't had any adverse reactions to shot number one. And I go take shot number two next week. I have no fear. You know, because if you covered, if you covered, you know, by the blood, then you should be all right. You know, you can't live out of fear. No one should be living out of fear. So, you know, just make a decision to make up your mind. And um, there's still there. You can go on um, uh, the Norton's Healthcare, uh, West Broadway for the y YMCA uh, and, and, and make you an appointment. Um, just, just, just do what you need to do. Take care of yourself. It's all about taking care of self, you know, and the disparity in the black community about even receiving the vaccine. Don't stand back. Get in front of the line, get in front of the line and take care of yourself. On that note, I want to say, you know, um, happy Friday. It's dinner time somewhere, so bon appetit. Till next time, I'll see you on Monday. Bye.